Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, these are the, well this is the front brake pipe that I've been talking about in the last video that I said was causing me a little bit of headache. The reason being, you've got this T piece at this side with a joint going across here and there's basically, there's, there's a few different pieces to it and I was trying to figure out the best way to refinish it all um, in one piece because I didn't really want to have to undo it all uh, because if I do, then I want to put new ends on and that means then having to remake a pipe, which we can make, not a problem. But I want to try and keep everything as original as I can because there's so many new bits going on this bike as it is. Any bits we do have, I want to try and save, but they have to be restored and be, and be as perfect as I can. That being said, what I've decided to do is undo this pipe. I'm going to take this pipe off, which will then allow me to take that bracket off because that's the bracket that's been causing the headache. Because if I left it all in one piece, I have to take that clip off, which instantly makes that bracket loose so it can go all over the place. And I was trying to think, how can I paint something? Those ends are fine. That end's fine. The T piece is fine. But how do I paint this bit with this bracket flopping all over the place and everything has to be done olive drab. So it's, how, how do I mask it up? And it was just gonna be an absolute faff. So what I've decided is, I'm gonna bite the bullet, I'm gonna undo the pipe. It's I've tried to undo it and it's incredibly tight to undo, but I'm, I don't really wanna make a new pipe. Uh, but I'm gonna undo the pipe. We can then take that bracket off, then we can get on paint it. Now normally, all what you see here, apart from that brake pipe, that brake pipe is painted olive drab, it's got a matte finish to it. The ends are plated with a, a zinc plate with a yellow passivate on which we can do. I'm going to see what condition they're in when we blasted them. That'll, that'll make the, be the decider whether I choose to make a new pipe and put two new ends on or save this pipe and replate those two ends. That'll what will decide that one. The rest of it, people are probably thinking, paint, why is he painting them? Everything on here normally, apart from the pipe, is plated. That's normally on this on this one, but it's an olive drab finish. It's quite difficult to do the olive drab and get a consistent finish on everything, hence why you'd normally put, if you've got a batch of bolts that are all going to sail on the front wheel area, you'd all plate them all in one batch, in one go, not separately. I've, I've plated a bolt, timed it, everything, measured the temperature, followed the whole process, repeated it, and it comes out different. So you have to, if you've got five bolts that are all going in the same area, I always plate them at the same time, exactly. But a lot of the brackets and things like that, the olive drab, it, it doesn't seem to work very well, if I'm honest. It, it, you can get a nice finish, but it's never even across the piece, and it just, oh, I, I mean, I've never been happy with it. And for that reason, over the last few years, I've sort of tried to develop my own olive drab paint that looks as close to what the finish on them was originally. Now, yes, if you put an original piece that we've got up, new old stock pieces, if you put an original piece next to a piece I've painted, there is a slight difference. Yes, there is. But most people that have ever seen any of my bikes have looked at them and they've gone, who did your olive drab plate it? That's amazing. And so it's actually pain. And then when they look at it, they're like, mm, oh God, well, yeah, it's all right, there's that. I thought you'd had it plated. So if everyone that looks at it thinks it's been plated, it'll do for me. So we're gonna blast these. I'm gonna put them in the dry blaster first. I'm gonna block up these three balls. Then we're gonna dry blast them. Now I'm not gonna put anything around the rubbers to protect them. I've had a quick look at the rubbers. They're all in good condition. They're not split or anything like that. The reason I'm not masking the rubbers up, although I'm dry blasting it, is because I have the pressure turned right down and I use a very fine media as well. It's for doing lightly rusted stuff, not real heavy stuff. Now if you're doing this yourself and you're having to take it out to someone who's doing the blasting for you, please check with them because if they're using a great big blaster, you know, if they're using something with a fireman's hose like this, it's just gonna blow your hose away. So always check with them first, but for what I use, we don't need to mask these up, it'll be absolutely fine. You're gonna see that in shortly in the video. Then once we've done that, I'm gonna wet blast it all. Now you don't have to wet blast any any of the end bits or anything like that. I will do, um, just because I, it'll get done while I'm doing the hoses. The main reason, I'm babbling, is because I'm gonna aqua blast the rubber hoses. The reason for this, these rubber hoses have little 
lines in them going all the way down, it's part of the rubber hose. What that does is, yes you can scrub it all clean and stuff like that, but the wet blaster, it's very quick, it cleans all of that out, it cleans it, it makes it look really nice and black and it's not false, it's not putting additives on or anything like that, or all these gels and things to make your rubber hose, it just cleans the rubber and it makes it look nice and black again. And the bonus to it is, on these rubbers, there is white writing, which is not important for what we want really, but it, it, it's, it's basically what's printed on the hoses. You'll see it on all sorts of brake line hoses and things like that, hydraulic hoses. Just telling you different information about the hoses, really the size of it, the pressure it should work up to. The good thing about what we're gonna do is, the wet blaster doesn't actually take that print off. It actually cleans it and it makes it more visible. So that's even better, because it looks more original when you put it back together. So I'm gonna go and do that now. I'm gonna leave it in one piece to blast it, bung the holes up so we don't get all media down the holes, and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all been blasted. So that's all the ends blocked up now. Let's go and blast them. So guys, that's the brake pipes. They've been blasted and cleaned now. They're ready to dismantle. And then I'll, I'm gonna go through the next few steps and get them painted and plated and all done and everything. But I've been a little busy this week, so there's a few things here we've been doing. Been blasting, etching bike frames for people. I've been doing everybody else's projects this week. So I haven't had much chance to get on with my own stuff. But there's a little treat for you all as you probably saw at the beginning of the YouTube clip that should be on there. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you a sneaky peek of this door. So there's a few little treats behind here for you, and let me take you in and show you what we've got. So this is my little Honda collection I have going on in here. This is the VFR 400NC30. So this was completely restored. I did this one about four years ago now. It's a 1989. This one actually has brake line ends, olive drab like I was explaining earlier on in the video.
Never ridden this one much. I haven't ridden any of them much, to be honest with you. It's always miserable weather in England. And then next to it, the one that is the freshest one out of them all is the little Honda NSR50, 1987. Finished this one last year. It's a lovely little bike is that. It's so tiny and best of all, it's road legal as well, which makes it even more fun. But I think all I've had a chance to do on this one is yeah, 52, nearly 53 kilometers. That's all I've done on that one. I'm gonna try and use that one a bit more this coming year. And then we have the little Honda Dream 50 over there. Got that one back in 2012. Restored that one. And then the one that got everything started back when I was only nine or 10 years old. Little Honda PC50, and I'm sure a few of you watching this video will remember this one. So yeah, that was a quick look at the my little Honda collection. Um, eventually, I'll do some videos on all of these. Hopefully, when the weather gets nicer in summer, we'll have some videos going out and rides out on them and stuff like that, uh, bits and pieces. And I'll also add some photos on other restorations. Sadly, I've got no videos of doing any of these ones; just all photos. Um, but I'll put some of them on for you. Um, so if you like this video. Uh, please hit the notification bell, please like and uh, most importantly please subscribe. See you in the next video. Thanks guys.